Let's talk about artificers multi-classing, particularly what it means to take an artificer dip or to dip from artificer into another class today on Flute Sloot. I have an article accompanying this video. You can find a link to that in the description below to see all my notes and way more information than I will present in this video. Artificers already have medium and light armor and shields. They have spell casting, they can make magic items, they can use tools, they can even use a few weapons, and their subclasses can accentuate any of those different directions you could go in. So they're pretty self-sufficient usually. If anything, you might go for a level in fighter so that you can get a fighting style if you're doing the battlesmith, for example. If you're not going to be an armorer artificer, you can start out at level one as a fighter just so you could get heavy armor proficiency, or you could go Twilight Cleric to get all the stuff that it gets, including martial weapons and heavy armor, plus initiative bonuses and dark vision. Yeah, Twilight Cleric, right? You might get two levels of wizard just so that you can boost your spell slot progression, get some useful wizard spells, and a wizard subclass. Arcane Deflection from the War Magic Wizard would be really cool. If you like manipulating dice rolls, you could get Portent for the Divination Wizard. And then what about classes that want to dip into Artificer? My top choice is Wizards, because when they dip into Artificer, they can get that medium armor and shield proficiency that will help Wizards to survive a lot more. They'll also gain some healing options and a few more spells. If you go two levels of Artificer, you can start using infusions to make your own magic items or to enhance mundane items. And if you want to go all the way to third level, you can get a subclass. But usually, if you're a wizard, I think you get the most value out of just one level of Artificer. Plus, wizards are based on intelligence just like Artificers, so there's no problem needing to spread out your stats to solve the multi-classing requirements. Also, if you start the game as an Artificer at level one, you will get constitution saving throw proficiency, which is very important for maintaining concentration. Rogues might also enjoy multi-classing with artificers so they can get the booming blade cantrip, medium armor and shields, and a few other tricks up their sleeve. Besides, rogues tend to like having intelligence, especially if they are an arcane trickster. Let's go through each of the artificer subclasses to see what kind of concepts would be fun for multi-classing, and maybe a few optimal builds or interesting gimmicks to the mechanics that could be fun to exploit. In my article, if you go to the link, I'll also summarize what each of the subclasses does, but in this video I'll just assume more or less that you know what the artificer classes do already. For the Alchemist Artificer, one of my recommendations is to get one level of Life Cleric. The Alchemist has a few functionalities that make it a great support subclass, though often considered the weakest of the Artificer subclasses. If you lean more into what it's good at by one level of Cleric, you can do better healing, you can gain heavy armor, and you can gain effective spells that will help your team cohesion. One great example is gaining the Bless spell. That's a great teamwork spell to help you and your allies. Additionally, you get to stack two healing abilities here because your Life Cleric ability makes you heal better with spells, and your Alchemist's Alchemical Savant ability makes you heal better too. You could get a flat healing bonus if your intelligence is 20 up to plus 8. With these two abilities combined, if your intelligence is 20, you could get a minimum of plus 8 to your healing spells. You really only need to get a 13 Wisdom as well in order to multi-class with the Life Cleric because a lot of the spells are not going to be dependent on your Wisdom being high. While you're at it, you might take a level of Druid as well. You already have the Wisdom for it, and then you get the Good Berry stacking with Disciple of Life. But just keep in mind if you want to wear heavy armor or not while you are a Druid because some people prefer to stick to the whole Druids not wearing metal armor thing. I personally would be more open to it in this kind of situation where you're just getting a one level dip, and you can actually pretend you don't actually have a Druid level, it's just you gain some more skills as an Artificer. Another fun concept I thought of was to do Thief Rogue 5 and Alchemist Artificer. With the Thief's Fast Hands ability, you can bonus action douse someone in oil and then cast Heat Metal on them. The damage will be boosted by a flat bonus of 5 from the oil. Go ahead and read the description of oil in the player's handbook because most people don't remember this, but oil makes fire damage do plus 5. Alchemists can also boost their fire damage because of their alchemical savant feature. So again, if you have a 20 intelligence, that's a plus 10 to fire damage. Another idea I had was to go alchemist artificer 14 levels and order of the scribes six. This will allow you to change the damage type of some of your spells to one that fits with the alchemist's alchemical savant ability so you can boost the damage by your intelligence modifier. But the real reason I'd wanna do this is that you can make spell scrolls really fast because you'll get two features that speed up magic item crafting for spell scrolls specifically. The Order of the Scribes gets Master Scrivener and the Artificer gets Magic Item Adept. I have an article all about spell scroll crafting if you want to check that out as well. Maybe I'll put a link up here. Going quickly through some of the other options I thought of was to go Alchemist Artificer 3 and Transmutation Wizard 17. Some people don't think transmuters and alchemists are overlapping concepts, but I think they are. And I actually reworked the Transmuter Wizard. I have a revised version of it if you want to check that out. I have a video and an article about that as well. I like the idea of wizards being able to heal as well as do their 
their usual stuff. And again, artificers really boost the defenses of wizards. You can be an alchemist artificer with two levels of knowledge cleric so that you can download information from the gods when you run out of inventive ideas of your own. And then you can combine the alchemist with the peace cleric so that you can make potions that grant 1d4 to your allies, cast bless for another 1d4 to your ally, and use your emboldening bond for another d4 to your allies. So you could be giving your allies just a flat 3d4 to roll throughout combat. That's pretty fun. The next Artificer subclass is the Armorer. I like the idea of putting an Abjuration Wizard in Magically Enhanced Heavy Armor. So let's go Armorer, Artificer, and Abjuration Wizard. 17 levels of Wizard, 3 Artificer. The Armorer can ignore the Strength requirement of Heavy Armor, and it gains proficiency with Heavy Armor. The Abjuration Wizard can create wards to defend itself and its allies, and then you can use infusions to further boost your defenses and such. I think this is a really fun combination. I'd especially like to see it done for a Warforged Abjurer to go Armor Artificer and just really get decked out in armor. Another fun wizard for the Armorer would be the Chronergy Wizard. Go 17 levels of that as well, and you could start to do King the Conqueror type stuff from Marvel Comics. You could freeze people in time like Syndrome's Energy Prison Tech from The Incredibles, and your armor could dispense little gumballs of magic from the Chronergy's ability to put a spell into a little orb. The Armorer would also be fun with an Illusion Wizard because you could play it like it's Mysterio. You've got the armor and the fishbowl, and you do illusions. I go through a bunch of other wizards in my recommendations. I won't go through each one in detail, but I also thought War Magic and Necromancy would be fun. I like the idea of a Necromancer being able to go amongst its undead minions in armor to use life draining on enemies while the undead support it. The Battle Rager Barbarian, very unpopular. I chose to revise it with the help of Shard, another YouTuber and my buddy. You combine that with the armor and you can have a dwarf with spiky armor and an artificer so it makes its own armor and it makes it spiky and it's enhanced in ways that the base Battle Rager didn't really explore. I also like the idea of combining Armorer Artificer, 17 levels, and 3 levels of Psy Warrior Fighter so that you can do protective fields that feel like the Psy Warrior's features. Though maybe Abjuration Wizard is better for that, but I don't know. You could go either way on that one. If you combine the Artillerist Artificer and its use of firearms, if you're doing that, firearms and explosives, you could create more gunpowder that's usually more expensive using the features of the Creation Bard. My wife Opal, who also writes articles and makes videos on this channel, had the idea for a seafaring artillerist who is a pirate using the gunpowder guns that pirates often do, but also the swashbuckling of a rogue. It's notable that artificers can ritual cast water walk, so then you can become water worthy as a swashbuckler. Similar to the armorer, the artillerist lends well to an abjuration wizard, but the artillerist can do something different by creating their turrets with the temporary hit points. The Battlesmith level 3 could pair well with 17 levels of a Blade Singer. The Blade Singer is already trying to divide its attention between attack stats and its intelligence for spellcasting, but what if you could make both the same? The Battlesmith allows you to do that. Plus, you can get a little companion that you can flavor in any way that you want. Taking two levels of War Magic Wizard for Arcane Deflection and Tactical Wit would be especially useful for a Battlesmith to go first in combat and be able to defend itself if it's not relying too heavily on non-cantrip spells. The Forge Cleric, two levels of it, can also make a lot of sense. Your Channel Divinity can allow you to be a true Battlesmith, forging weapons on the battlefield as you need, using your infusions to enhance them. That feels like a fantastic artificer to me. Plus you get the Cleric spells that are so useful. The Psy Warrior, three levels of it, would also be a fun multi-class for an artificer Battlesmith. You could treat your psionic powers less as your psychic abilities and more of the technology you developed being manifested through the weapons you've created. They put out arcane deflection fields and those sorts of things. You can push enemies around and defend yourself. I've done a poll over the recent months on flutesuit.com asking people why they multi-class, and far away the top reason, over a third of people said role-playing. Almost 6,000 people responded, so that's a lot of responses, so getting over 30% saying role-play really is surprising. Power builds, or optimization, was secondary to that at about 23%. Feel free to go take that poll yourself on flutesuit.com by going to the article link in the description. And let me know if there are any artificer concepts or best practices that you think I missed. I am always happy to update my article with new concepts or ideas that add to everyone's gaming experience that should be shared. Don't forget to use your two infusions on the like button below and the subscription button so you can see our future videos and show your support for this kind of content if you enjoy it. I hope you have an excellent adventure this weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.